listen to the word of God just before you sleep. And now, Apostle Joseph and Simma. Okay, let's pray and continue with our talk. Eternal God, we thank you, we bless you, we give you honor and glory because you love us. And you want us to experience change and begin to walk in the newness of life. We thank you, Holy Spirit, tonight in Jesus' name. Amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. Okay, yesterday we talked about the starting point. The starting point and the, the last point on yesterday was that take the list that you have written on the things you want to change, the cost if you don't change, and the benefits and give it to somebody that you are going to be accountable to. And uh, some of us, that was a very hard nut to swallow. <laughs> there, is, there is English like that. It's very difficult. And you know why it is difficult? Because you are still resistant to personal change. That's, that's a sign. I'm going to give you that. If you are still failing to hand over that list to somebody, it's nothing else but it's because you are resisting personal change. You're still thinking things will change uh, outwardly without inward change. And I can tell you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And somebody will say, but why should I give a list, a, a list to someone? We're going to discover as I continue teaching today. Now, today, what you need to do, it is to identify agents of change. Because change don't or change does not come automatically. The changes that we need to make in our personal lives will require agents of change. What will we apply? What, who is going to help us? What is going to cause change in our personal lives? Identify them in order that the change may take place and each agent has its own part to play. Okay, now we've got to also understand that planning to change and thinking to change does not bring change. We can plan to change and think change and never change until we apply the agents of change. Then we are going to see change taking place in our lives. Okay, agent number one, I'm going to give you five. Agent number one is the agent of prayer. Agent of prayer. You know, family, there are things that we have wanted to change within us. But if we are looking at it uh, critically, we realize that we have never given time to pray about them. I do that a lot can wake up in the morning and I'm feeling symptoms in my body. And I think healing. Maybe I even speak, uh, I, I'm going to be healed. But uh, throughout the day, I just realized I did not pray about it. There are times when uh, we have finances that we need in the church. We are, I'm looking for financial change financial change in my life and in my family. But after some times, I realize I never put this matter before God on a serious note. I can tell you that prayer works. No matter how little or how physical or natural the change you are looking to may be, put it before God. Go before God and pray sincerely that God I, uh, I need change in this area of my life. Prayer is an agent of change. And the, all the lists, or the lists, depending on what you made, pray over them one by one. Possibly look for scriptures to stand on. Agent of change number two, find a mentor or a person to be accounted, accountable to immediately. 
I say define a mentor or a coach, depending on what you are looking for, or a person to be accountable to immediately. And somebody says, why do I need a mentor? Why do I need a coach? What do I need uh, somebody to be accountable to? It's very simple. For the past 30 years, you've failed to change yourself. I've failed to change myself, which means I can't supervise myself to implement the change I'm looking for. I have failed, or you have failed for the past 30 years. Some of you is for the past 40 years, 20 times two. You've been trying. It is just wisdom family to say, you know what? I have failed to self-supervise. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are people who are very disciplined. When they decide, I'm going to do this, they put their mind there. They stuck to it. But most of us are not like that. And to be helped, you need a mentor. You need a coach. You need somebody. And look for him immediately from tonight. Begin to look for that person. If you need me, phone me. We will just talk about the price. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to help you. Okay, let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. I want to show you something very important, family. This is not a joke. This is not a joke. When you read Proverbs chapter 5, reading from verse 6, the Bible says, Go to the ant thou sluggard. Consider her her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provide a meat in summer and gather the food in the harvest. The Bible is saying, consider the ant. But he's saying the ant doesn't have a ruler. In other words, it is necessary to have somebody to, to teach you, to guide you, to have a leader over your life. Very important. And I can tell you, you need it, I need it. We need somebody to, to guide us in the time that we are still working on our change. Number, number what? Number three. You will like this one. You will like this one. When you have a mentor, you've come, you've come to the place where we call create teamwork if possible. Find or create a team to work with on the changes you are looking for. Possibly, it should be those who are also sharing the same dream. Teamwork is very important. Just to have somebody to encourage you. Somebody to, to say, yes, we can do for it. Find somebody. Most of us, we cannot experience personal changes because we are too private. And our privacy is because of that we are, because we are resisting change, or we don't want to be accountable, or we are not serious enough. We are not saying, you know what, this is a do or die. We have left some room to say, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and it's only me who know, and I'm just alone. If you are doing that, you are not yet serious about the changes that you are looking for. That is number, number three. Number four, number four, read the biographies. Read the biographies. Go online. Buy books. Oh, God of Abraham. I don't know how I'm going to encourage believers to do this. You see, the changes you are looking for, the success you want to attain, the breakthrough you want, millions of people have already breaked through, if there's English like that, or broken through. That's the right English, not breaked. Uh, they have broken through. People have been healed from the sickness that you are struggling with. People came from zero to becoming millionaires. People were on the verge of divorce and they overcame and they have a good family. People were overweight that it, 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 it took 10 minutes for them to stand up. Have you seen people who, when they are standing up, <laughs> you've got to pray, Kushik and Debro, now they are up. Is, is that? But they worked on themselves. Today, they can run a marathon. There are people 
who have achieved, who have overcome, who have changed in the areas where you and me are struggling to change. Read their biography. Their biography will encourage you. You're going to be inspired. In fact, family, some of them were worse than you and me. But somehow, somehow, they made it. Read the biographies. Go to the library. Nowadays, you can download books. Nowadays, you can listen to biographies on YouTube. I listen to biographies a lot. If I want to be something, sometimes I reach a point of discouragement. I am discouraged as a pastor. And I read on how somebody who was discouraged, who had financial challenges, ministry challenges more than me, how they broke through. And that just uh, brings the motivation and the encouragement. Read the biographies in the area where you need to change. And then number four. Five, and uh, empowerment, be empowered. What do you do on number five? Find the source of empowerment. Every failure to change is a symptom of a weakness. Yeah, it could be mental weakness, physical weakness, emotional weakness, spiritual weakness. Every failure to change is a symptom or a sign of a underlined weakness. And if you're going to change, there must be what we call empowerment to overcome that barrier that has been holding you and me from changing. So identify the sources of empowerment. I'm going to give you examples of sources that you need. Source number one is reading. I go back to reading. Read books. Read books. If you want to overcome and believe, read books on faith. Then you will change from unbelief to faith. If you want to overcome changes of procrastination, read books on goal setting and planning. Read books on vision and so forth. Number two, it is that find a good church if your problem is spiritual or start going to church. Some of us, we are staying home. We miss church. We don't go to church or we are in the church where we just go there because it is near. Find a good church where the word of God is preached. <laughs> if you are in Pretoria, come to discipleship ministries. I'm telling you, you're not going to, to regret. So if your person is the, your problem or the change you want to make is spiritual, find a good church. Go and attend classes. In other words, I can go on and on, but make it a point that you find a source of personal empowerment for the change that you want to experience. Let me pray with you. Abba, Father, I thank you that Lord and God of Abraham, we are not just listening or hearers who do not do what we hear. I pray somebody will take this to heart and begin to see the changes in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you for watching. Join us every Monday to Friday for more on the Word of God just before you sleep.